Hey, Nick. Hey, Doc. Okay, so don't freak out, but I have some bad news. We have to play Morrowind again? No. No, apparently there's an inherent torture value in the YouTube comments by themselves. Whatever, man, that don't bother me. They're not gonna say anything that I haven't already heard before. Oh, okay, great, great. Then you won't care what this guy said about your voice. Who said what about who? Yeah, apparently your voice is like sandpaper underwear. Like a, like a sewing needle being slowly driven into your ear towards your brain. First of all, that's my voice, okay? It's not like I can help it. And second of all, who says things like that? His mother would be ashamed. Look at what this guy said. He says, honestly, like your stuff, but this was the equivalent of an AVGN Minecraft review. Instead of a character, perhaps you should get a real person instead of a high-pitched goblin! I'm not the antagonist, he's the one torturing me, idiot! But listen, there's something bigger at stake here, okay? The demons here, they torture me less when we get more views, so I'm gonna need you to do me a favor. I'm just gonna need you to talk just a little bit less. Nah, screw you, Doc! No, screw you! Because you're gonna be playing a sequel to a game you probably hate, and you're gonna start in the middle without a clue as to what's going on. So let me get you up to speed! Alright, where did I leave off? Oh yeah, we were in the desert. We left our home for the first time, left our friends and our family. <laughs> Our mission? To explore strange new settlements and dot those lands with the bodies of the dead and children who will only know their father by one name, the Chosen One. We stole from children. We evicted squatters and set up orphanages. We robbed slavers and liberated goods. But nothing could prepare our good-natured desert redneck for yuppies. Head to Vault City to recruit our second companion, but getting there is quite the feat. If you spoke to Joey, you could head to New Reno and get a bunch more training on your hand-to-hand -hand and a ton of other skills. Vault City is essentially on the other side of the goddamn map. And you have to go over mountains to get there. Along the way, you'll be confronted by all manner of random encounters. If you get raiders versus animals of any kind, do that encounter and focus on killing the raiders as quickly as you can. The loot that these guys drop is fantastic early on. Farmers versus anyone is pretty much a death sentence because the farmers are likely to run away, leaving you there to soak up the damage, which we can't really do at the moment. Also, be sure to check out the caves. Sometimes it's free XP in the form of low-level critters, and sometimes it's death claws, so be careful with this. As soon as you get to Vault City, the first thing you want to do is go and recruit Cassidy over at the bar. You'll notice that Cassidy is now a talking head who lives in Moz Isley and either has a three-pack-a-day cigarette habit or he takes all his food rectally. It actually sounds like the voice isn't coming from Cassidy's mouth, but from the mouth of a twin he swallowed in utero. Well now, ain't seen you around before, stranger. He said, wada 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 once he's with you, take his shotgun and his shotgun shells because he can't be trusted with a weapon that does spread damage. See, you're one of those people that likes to get right up in people's faces. And that means that when you're in melee range, you're between the enemy and Cassidy, which is a bad place to be. Basically, whenever you give your companions a weapon, you want to ask yourself, do I want to be hit with this? And let that guide your decisions. Because if not, you'll be soaking up all them searing hot pellets directly into your spine. Oh, my back! Don't take that risk. Go buy him a hunting rifle and as many rounds as you can afford. Now you can branch off from the playthrough at this point. You could fast forward to the Vault City section, get the super tool kit so you could trade for the fuel cell part you need to finish the car. Then head to MODOK, because MODOK essentially locks you into having to return to the den anyway, so since you're gonna have to go back, you might as well knock this shit out now. I'm not doing that because walking back and forth can cause a mutation, which is actually beneficial, and because we can grind out a lot of EXP on the way. But in the end, the choice is yours, whatever makes you happy. MODOK is named after the Native American people who lived there before they were convinced to move to Oklahoma. After the apocalypse, it is now inhabited by about 13 well-armed cattle ranchers. So it's about the same as pre-war MODOK, just more sand. MODOK is almost directly to the west of Vault City, so travel directly west and you'll eventually hit town. Go to the general store to engage in a bit of gum flapping with the local mayor. Apparently, MODOK is in the midst of a terrible drought and their crops no longer grow. They have a slaughterhouse and grazing fields, which is crazy because I've never seen grass here before. Some dry ass twigs, check. Mutated fruit, check. 
Little sprigs of what one could call grass if they were being generous? Yeah, sure, but a grazing field? Nah, my dude, not a one. If he asked the mayor about the holy geck, he says that he has some information for us, but he needs a favor. And here we go with this. This whole you scratch my back, I scratch your back kind of thing. It's no wonder designers and producers getting me too if this is how they think life works. Hey, you know, I could give you that promotion or you could give me a look at them sweater muffins, eh, thuts? So we're gonna take an appendage off of this guy, Merchant of Venice style. The mayor of this dump says that they send a guy named Carl there to tend to the farm up north, and you might recognize that name Carl as one of the old delirious drunks that hangs out at mom's. He's the one prone to bouts of screaming and narcolepsy. Now I get this guy. His writing really speaks to me on a deep level. I too drink myself stupid until I forget the horrible memories of what I've seen. Stop! Now, you could simply agree to do whatever the mayor wants you to do, or you could ask the mayor to cut off his pinky to seal the deal, just in case you have a collection and this one will complete the set. Also, a guy has to be real serious about wanting something done if he's willing to cut off his pinky. That actually should be the punishment for putting your hands where they don't belong. Not enough in a hand to be debilitating, but just enough to be a reminder. And I'll tell you like this, there'd be a lot more well-dressed old men running around the New York Stock Exchange looking like Rahm Emanuel. You know what I mean? Before we move on with our task, we need to check out some of the local fare, taking the sights, push over some cows, you know, shit like that. There's a slaughterhouse in town, and if you go there, you can pick up some dried meat and ask Grisham about the slaughterhouse. And then you'll exhaust all his dialogues, then say bye, but then he'll stop you and ask you if you're interested in some work. Say yes! You'll get a mission to defend some cattle from a pack of wolves, and for every one cow that dies in this scenario, you get 100 caps less for the job. It's possible to save all the cows if you intercept the wolves to the north, and hit as many as you can and draw their aggro before they get to the cows. And when you're all done, you'll be teleported back to town to get your reward. 1,000 caps minus any fatalities and 250 experience points. Outside the slaughterhouse, you might run into a cow named Bessie. Bessie has a broken leg, and unless you have a 35% in doctor, you can't heal it. So if you've been investing in it like I've told you, you should be able to heal her soon, likely when you gain your next level. The leather worker has a problem. Seems his boy done run off on him, and he and his wife are dying to get him back because free labor's hard to come by. Babies don't have the finger dexterity to hold leather working tools, so as you can imagine, there's quite an investment in this employee. The house just isn't the same without his emaciated frame darkening the halls. Outside is a dog named Lassie. You know what, can we get a cutaway? What's that, Lassie? You want me to follow you? Screw you! Lassie will lead you to the center of town where there's a well. Click on the wooden cover to open it. Then open your inventory and find a length of rope. Did I mention you need rope? No? Well, you do. You can get some over at the store. Use the rope on the well and climb down. Inside, you'll find a pile of individual coins that people have been tossing down. For each of these coins you pick up, you'll lose one karma. It's like, all right, I get the premise, but who am I stealing from? The well? Like, like is this game suggesting that the well is sentient or that wishes are real? Because, like, you only have to look around you and tell that wishes are not real. Not in this place. Towards the back of the cave, you'll find a BB gun that used to belong to Johnny. And it looks like the little tyke done went down there and got himself dead. I wonder if Johnny was wishing for a chicken sandwich before he died. I don't think he got his wish. Sometimes the pop culture references actually influence gameplay, like with Lassie. Why do I care about a pop culture reference to an old show? Shh, shh. The audience doesn't want to hear from you, okay? So anybody that grew up in the 90s like I did knows Lassie. They know what that pop culture reference is. What's that, Lassie? Huh? Billy fell down a well? So when we hear that Johnny's gone missing and then we see Lassie sitting there, we think to ourselves, uh, where should we go? Maybe the middle of town where there's a well. I only point it out because it's like this little bit of design magic that they did where they used our public consciousness as a gameplay mechanic. But we didn't really need the Lassie reference. I mean, it's easy enough to put together ourselves. You got a missing kid, you got a well. Bing, bang, boom. You're gonna think to yourself that kid's gonna be in the well mystery solved or is it now? You might have already figured out that this kid's not dead Maybe you've already played the game and you know that Billy's in the basement at the ghost farm And you're just taking a break from watching Tracer get railed out by Genji either way, you know now So if you go and you tell that leather worker that his son's dead Well, that makes you kind of a dick go up to the northern part of town and enter this house and talk to a guy named Pharrell He'll tell you that his best friend has accused him of stealing his watch Cornelius. Oh, Dr. Zayas. Cornelius thinks he stole it, but Pharrell swears up and down that he didn't. Pharrell asks if we could take care of this problem that he's got over where the crops are grown. If you agree to help, you'll be teleported to a new area that is indeed infested with rats. This is basically free XP for us, so use the hit and run tactics we talked about before and rip and tear until the work is done. 
Go for the ice, boo. Go for the ice. Rusk! You get 300 XP for this and basically nothing else. And I'm almost positive that the safe he has hidden behind his mattress has nothing there. It like opens up a portal to another reality where every safe that you open is just another safe. Like I can't tell if this is a pop culture reference or an actual bug. Anyway, job done. On to the ghost farm. The people here on the farm are called slags. I met a slag once in Lakeland on my way to St. Petersburg. Apparently, the owner of the gas station told her she couldn't come into the store anymore and she desperately needed a Mike's Hard Lemonade. Now, I got her one, and what did I get for my efforts? A toothy blowjob and a rash that won't go away. These people are not that kind of slag. They're the type of slag that keeps kids in a basement, so they're worse. There's a couple of ways to enter the slag's caverns and meet with a leader. The easiest way is to wait until nightfall and get caught running around the farm by a patrol accompanied by something either dressed like a glowing ghoul or an actual glowing ghoul. You have two choices from here. Surrender or kill the entire contents of the farm in the underground caves. I suggest surrendering so you can talk to the leader. If you come to the farm during the day, walk over every carpet inside the house and get footprints all over their stuff. You'll eventually find one with a hole underneath of it and guess what happens next? gravity happens. Don't do this unless you want to practice your doctor skills to heal your possibly broken leg. The leader of this group tells you that they've been putting on a little charade to scare off anyone that comes to steal their crops. They're willing to set up trade with Modoc, but here's the issue. Modoc believes the farm is haunted because they're dumb. Agree to try and set up an alliance between the two towns and they'll set you free, but if you don't, they won't let you leave, and you either have to sneak out or shoot up the place. To the north of the cave is a place where they keep all the children, which is weird by itself. But like I said, the wasteland doesn't like children, but apparently some like them in a different way. Here you'll find Johnny, the leather worker's son. And if you have Lassie with you, she'll run right up to the kid, pointing out which one's him. Because, I mean, look, comedy's hard. From here, you're going to want to go to the mayor and Modoc and tell him about the deal that the slags want to make. But this dude has the balls to make a demand. He tells you that unless you can find out what happened to Carl, they're going to attack that farm in 30 days. I mean, to me, it just sounds like you want an excuse to kill those people so you can steal all their stuff. I mean, you don't have to make stuff up, man. Just, you know, do what you want. We're both adults here. You have three options here. Attack Modoc to prevent them from wiping out the slags, wait 30 days and kill the slags, ruining any chance you might have had to reunite Johnny with his father, or head over to the drunk at mom's restaurant. I say we walk to the den because it gives us a chance for some free Wasteland Encounter EXP. It'll take you about 20 days in total to walk to the den and back to Modoc, so there's no time for screwing around in between, or Modoc will end up attacking the town. Find Carl at mom's, get him to talk, get him to tell his story, and then head to Modoc and tell the mayor what you know. Joe will call off the attack, and now you can head back to the slags to reunite Johnny with his father for some nice EXP. At this point, you'll level up, so take this opportunity to get your doctor skill up to 35 and walk over to the cow with the broken leg and heal her up. The cow will follow you everywhere, and if you lack a heart and soul, you can walk Bessie right up to the slaughterhouse and get yourself some nice dry meat off her. But you would have to be an awful, awful person to do that, wouldn't you? You know who is an awful person? Joe! Joe is a terrible person. Because when you ask him about the Gek, he looks at you like he don't know what you're talking about. Like, I don't know, a Gek? I, I've never heard of a Gek. It was a Gek. Was that like a lizard? He'll mention offhand that he feels embarrassed. Why is he embarrassed? Because he's a liar! Usually liars are embarrassed to be liars. You know? That used to be normal. If you don't have any explosives on you, go buy some from the mayor. You're gonna need it. Head over to the house just outside the bed and breakfast and open up the hatch behind the toilet. Climb down and you'll be up to your knees in various excretions. A cave-in happened here, and with all this methane, a single spark could blow the whole place sky high. Tell your companions to wait for your topside and head on down. Place the dynamite by the rubble and make sure you set something reasonable on a timer. And get the hell out of there. If all things go well, you should get out unscathed, but the town has been redecorated in the worst kind of way. That's what happened when you lie to the chosen one. Now for some reason in this game, every time you score a critical hit to the eye of a rat, no matter what size they are, they die immediately. So when you head to the back here and you meet the mole rat, shoot him in the eyes and he should go down pretty quickly. Now, pick up the watch and the stinky fruit and head over to Pharrell so he can clear his name. Before we leave town forever, head over to the bed and breakfast and talk to Rose. She'll thank you for saving her town and covering the place in shit and give you whatever she has in a lost and found box. She'll also give you an omelet whenever you ask for one for free. This is basically free healing so it's worth checking out we can head on to our next big mission area vault city but before you do just keep in mind that rose has a death claw in her backyard feel free to do whatever you want with that information Now, there's a bunch of easy XP here, and some of it's free and some of it's going to cost you. For instance, you can go to the kid over at the bar and help him find his dial, Mr. Nixon. You find the dial on the northeast side of the bar. Just hit the shift key to highlight all the interactable items, and you'll see it highlighted. Next to that Mr. Nixon dial is a mound of rubble. 
If you click it, you'll find a wrench. And if you have the pliers already, you can go right to Vic's daughter and get the super tool kit we need. There's one more thing that we should do here if we can afford it. Go and talk to the family living in the tent just outside the city limits and agree to bring them a plow. Happy Harold will sell you one for 800 caps, 600 if you have a decent bartering skill. Then find the guy just outside the bar. Use your doctor skill on him to diagnose him with radiation sickness. Use the Rad X on him and it'll pop up like newly risen dead. If you're feeling generous, you can help the woman to the southeast of town get her husband out of servitude. Optionally, you can tell her to forego the shackles of her freedom and become a slave so they can slave it up together. They can hold hands through the bars in their adjacent cells and give each other moral support when you have to pinch one off in the corner of the room. This quest is totally optional and I only suggest that if you can win on a speech check to convince the guy guarding the place that her husband has a communicable disease or if you just want to be an asshole. Up to you. Getting a day pass is fairly simple, but there's a ton of ways to do it, but only one strat way. You could try to pass a speech check and bullshit Wallace about networking. You could steal the pass from him, break into his office after midnight and steal the pass from the locker, or you could jump through a bunch of hoops in Reading. But we ain't doing none of that. I just wanted to point out how good this damn game is. Like, seriously, this much choice for a simple quest to get a day pass. All of you people talking shit about this game need to pull your heads right out of your ass because it isn't a hole in a wall. It's your actual ass. And your head doesn't belong there. Go up to Wallace and slowly, sensually, slip off all your clothes, dropping your armor to the floor. He'll see you in that skin-tight vault suit. He'll be flustered, absolutely flushed in the cheeks, and he'll have no option but to let you in to see the first citizen so she can get a look at them clapping ass cheeks. Now that you have a day pass, give all your illicit items to your companions, all your drugs, alcohol, and porno mags, and head into the city to complete some complicated and not so complicated quests. But first we need to go to Gecko because we need to become a citizen and before we could do anything in Vault City really, we need to go do that first. First thing you want to do is go talk to Skeeter. Skeeter has a car part we need, but it'll only give it up for a super toolkit. I don't know how far up his ass he's been hiding this thing, but you can't steal it from him and I wasn't able to find it on his shelf so you'll need to do this for him. If you got the day pass and the pliers and wrench, you just need to head back to Vault City and talk to Vic's daughter in the maintenance shop. Now whatever you do, don't piss this lady off. Just tell her you stopped in to see what the place is about. And if you're lucky, she might let you give her the tool that she needs. Ah, hey! Come back two days later and she'll give you a super tool kit for free. Head back to Gecko, hand Skeeter the tool kit, and he'll give you the fuel cell regulator. While you're here, go to the first building you see and talk to Harold. Harold will tell you about the hydroelectric magnetosphere and how you can probably get one from those racists over at Vault City. Also, there's a good amount of lore on this old man, and it's kind of fun dialogue, so experience it. It's worth it. Becoming a citizen has different paths. You can take the citizenship test and if you have a very high intelligence and luck, you'll pass the test. But only if you don't have a mutated toe. Now you can have the mutated toe cut off at an auto dock and you know you might be wandering around the desert and you might get a little hungry and you don't have any food in your bag. Just consider eating a toe. Alright, that's all I'm saying. The most common way to become a citizen is to fix or destroy the gecko power plant. McClure is the only person here who seems to be level headed, so go talk to him and tell him about the hydroelectric magnetosphere and he'll have the supply officer get you one. Take it over to gecko and have Festus, this guy, install it for you. If you've been investing in speech, you should be able to convince him to install it. If not, you'll need to access the reactor computer and input the sequence like so. Amplify plutonium gamma shield, deharmonize neptunian impeller, calibrate uranium rod driver, set voltage on saturn class capacitor, test jupiter wave compiler, install the hydroelectric magnetosphere regulator to save the plant, or turn the cooling valve off to make it go kerploosh! spraying hot green toxic goo in a bukkake blast across the faces of Modoc and Volt City. Now that the high mag is installed, let's go back over to where Skeeter lives to get another mission which will help us optimize the power plant. Go and talk to this guy in the house next to Skeeter's shop. His name is Gordon from Gecko. He gives you a speech that sounds very familiar. If you want to do a little extra work while you're here, you can go talk to the big brain rat that's underneath the old reactor site near Skeeter's house, the same place where you talk to Gordon. He'll talk about all the things you need to do in order to get the generator run at full capacity. Read this monologue and then head back over to Festus to get the optimization disc 
and go back to McClure and he'll grant you the access to the vault in its main computer. Now we want to head to that vault we couldn't get into and head to level 2 and lockpick the door with all the crates. Inside you'll find 420 water chips. Apparently this vault got the shipment of water chips instead of vault 13 and vault 13 got vault 8 spare geck. It's good to know that even in the future the government still can't manage to do simple tasks. Head to the room with the foot locker and you'll find a stim pack and a science book which is always useful. The doors to the north are stuck so use a buff out or go into combat and take jet. Exit combat and use the crowbar in a door. This will pry it open and allow you to get the red memory module, which you can use to increase your strength at a brotherhood base, and a set of metal armor. Scattered throughout the rooms, you'll find a syringe and maybe a stim pack, and if you hear something rattling, fix it with your repair skill. You'll get a microfusion cell out of it. On the third floor is a bunch more stuff to steal. Head to the supply closet and steal the dynamite, the Geiger counter, book, med kit, and stim pack, as well as all the drugs. And if you head to the door in the main control room, you get an Uzi, ammo, some flamer fuel, and grenades, as well as a 10 mil with some ammo. After you're done with your grand larceny, head over to the computer and get the location of Vault 15. With a high perception, you can have the central computer format your pit boy, which will give you the location of Redding, Broken Hills, NCR, Vault City, and New Reno. Now, before you go off running to the next area, you could go to the Gecko Power Plant, head over to the terminal, and hit the option to list off other stations. If you do this, you'll see a listing for a place called the Enclave. Please call them. Please be a dick. And please quick save before you do any of this. It's fun with a capital F-U and vertebrates. Before we move on, we need to realize something. All this walking around is hampering our exaggerated teenage swagger. We need to start blowing in the town in style. And we also need a lot of experience points before we head off anywhere near the south. We can also pick up a bunch of energy cells and money while we're doing all this. So head back to the den for the 500th and last time. Now, whenever you get into a random encounter, if the enemy is not a pack of heavily armed raiders or fire geckos, kill everything. And if there's a cave entrance, which there usually is make sure you clear out that cave as well and it should be about this time that you are so well armed that raiders are no longer a problem so long as you're assisted by farmers in the fight once you get to the den head over to the crack house and find the guy dressed in the suit and a top hat well he's here to return the favor and by return the favor i mean he gives you about 2,000 caps and about 200 energy cells and fusion cells as well as a plasma grenade i told you it was worth paying off this dude's debt then head over to where your brand new car is sitting and buy it off the old man he'll install the fuel cell thingy for you and now you're ready to put the top down and let the irradiated wind blow through your hair and run over folk in style. So, what do you think of Fallout 2, Nick? First of all, I think that art is subjective, and any attempts to critique it should be met with ridicule. It's experiential. You haven't experienced what I've experienced, and that's why you like boring games, because you've had a boring life. That can't be helped. No matter what people say about you, you just have to keep being you at all costs. It isn't perfect, no. Everyone has flaws, but you can't sum up a person just based on their flaws. You have to talk about the good. So to sum it up, I'm proud to be me, because being me is good enough. You're not talking about the game anymore, are you? My voice is fine the way it is. Okay, Nick. Whatever you say, buddy. <laughs>